get together and play some games with your family. And then we'll all take our temperatures together. Before we escape to an island and build a campsite with animal friends. <gasps> I know what you're going to do. It's time for iOS Today. Today iOS Today comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by Casper. Casper is a sleep brand that makes expertly designed products to help you get your best rest one night at a time. Get $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash iOS today. Use the promo code iOS today at checkout. And by Matthias, the Macintosh keyboard experts. When you need a new keyboard for your Mac, Matthias has you covered with beautiful options you can't find anywhere else. Visit Matthias at Matthias.ca slash iOS today for 10% off your purchase. iOS Today time. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're in our new uh, sealed booths. Mm -hmm. Social distancing. He's six feet away. Leo Laporte, <laughs> way far away over here. That's Micah Sargent over there. And hello to iOS. Welcome to iOS Today. We're still, uh, we're still quarantined as we do this show. Yeah, I think even more so um, than ever before. We is continue. it quarantine? Is that what we call it? Or self social distancing? Self social distancing is the term. Yeah, yeah. self isolation. Uh, self isolation. If you, there are some people that are annoyed with that term, so social distancing. Now, it's. Do you remember conscious uncoupling? <laughs> Do you remember that term? No, what's conscious uncoupling? There was a celebrity <laughs> couple who they didn't want to say they broke up or oh got a divorce. Oh, my God. So they said they had a conscious uncoupling. Okay, that's not um, what social distancing is. <laughs> that's not at all the same thing, but I like the that there is this sort of frustration about social distancing as if it, it falls into that same boat of, oh, why do we have to give names to everything? Oh, why does it have to... It's, just, it's fine, folks. It's social distancing. It's whatever you want to call it. We're we're staying safe. We're flattening the curve. For uh, us, I think the new for us nerds, it's like just normal time. Yeah, exactly. Staying home, playing a video game. What do you mean? So, yeah. What do you mean? That's what I'm always doing. Actually, we took our lives in our hands yesterday, and we ordered takeout um, because we want to support all the restaurants of Petaluma are closed. All of them are offering takeout, and mm -hmm. uh, Kenji uh, Alt Lopez, who I love. He is the king of sous vide. We did a segment with him on the new screensavers. Uh, he, of course, has the site Serious Eats and uh, one of the best uh, cookbooks of all time. But Kenji wrote a very good piece, which I recommend in Serious Eats, on why it's okay <laughs> to eat food, especially takeout. And, uh, and what we did is what he recommended, which is we ordered the food, they left it on the porch. Uh, we used a service where we could tip them so they, you know, they got extra money because we want to make sure everybody's getting helped out here and then we lisa took her life in her hands to picked up the food plated it all got rid of all the packaging carefully washed her hands and then the plated food is apparently quite safe so um we uh i thought you know first of all we were kind of missed our favorite burritos mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> for one thing uh and for another thing uh i wanted to kind of help out some of our favorite restaurants so we did it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I think, that's, I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. I, I honestly do think that that's great. Um, whether, you know, you you are going to the place and, and ordering takeout there. And so then you you wait outside. They have, bring it to the door or whatever. However, the, the different shakeout handoff works. Um, my grandmother's birthday was the other day. She turned 70. And so I ordered a cake um, from I hope it wasn't one of those toilet paper cakes. And it was not. It was not a baby diaper cake or a toilet paper cake. <laughs> okay. um, They're not made was, out of toilet paper. They're just cakes with the fondant and the icing shaped oh, to look like toilet paper. Oh no! I okay. I didn't know. You about haven't this. seen I, those? Oh yeah, no. they're doing them in a lot of cake places. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh wow. I think it's cute. Uh, yeah. I might have to do one of those then. I used to be a cake decorator. What? Um, 
Yeah, in high school, I had a little cake decorating business. No. And yeah. They, Are you they the called, king of fondant? I was the local cake boss. Um, oh, there was MG. An, <laughs> there was an article written about me, about what? me being cake boss, Micah well, Sargent. What's your, uh, what's your uh, favorite uh, cake that you did? My foo boy, um, probably a Chipotle burrito. Um, see, it was a lot see, of fun to make. See, see, but it Burritos. wasn't a burrito. It was made out of cake. It was made out of cake. It was big and it had fake lettuce and cheese and beans and all that kind of stuff in it. Um, and that was a lot of fun to do. And then probably the one closest to my heart is the cake that I made for my uh, youngest brother for his birthday one year. It was a Krabby Patty. Uh, for anyone who's watched SpongeBob, uh, it's the cheeseburger that the that the local uh, Krusty Krab makes. And so you <laughs> use uh, Rice Krispie Treats with brown marshmallow. You dye it brown and then it looks like... A a hamburger patty, oh but it's actually gosh. just a uh, rice cereal treat. Oh, I had, you know what? We're going to have to do some cake boss episodes of iOS today. I had no <laughs> idea you had this hidden, hidden talent. It was, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So maybe I'll make a toilet uh, paper cake. But no, for her, it was something called an ice cream pizza cake. Uh, essentially, it is an ice cream cake, but it's cut and shaped like uh, pizza slices. So then you can just pull it out and, and eat it. And I love it. It, it ended up uh, getting delivered it? to her door. She loved it. And Aww. she said, since no one's coming over to see me, I guess I'm just going to have to take care of this whole thing. And I said, you know what? Treat yourself. <laughs> Treat yourself. <laughs> She's earned it. She's. Aww. I self isolating, and we're all being responsible, Aww. and so yeah, she's earned it. I taught my mom texted me at six a.m. saying, "You want to talk?" And because I think she's a little lonely, she's eighty seven and also uh, at home alone. And uh, then she said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. I forgot about the time difference." But I I, I texted her back and I said, "Let me let me get up, and you can join me <laughs> for breakfast." And we had breakfast together, which I thought. Oh, was, that's so fun! I think this is one thing you know that technology is allowing us to do is. Between FaceTime, my daughter doesn't have an iPhone. She uses Duo, so I duoed with her yesterday. Uh, my son is in Bali, but you know what? You can FaceTime all over the world. Mm -hmm. And by the way, good news. Henry has uh, purchased a ticket to get home. It was a little challenging for him because so many uh, ports are, uh, airports are closed to uh, international travel. Um, so he's, Has he had to do some sort of uh, bouncing around in order yeah, to... Yeah, so he has to fly from Bali to Tokyo... Uh, and he's going to have an eight-hour layover in Tokyo and then from Tokyo to San Francisco. And then when he gets home, of course, 14-day uh, quarantine for him before we can uh, we can see him. But now, this quarantine, I'm curious about this. And uh, is this a quarantine where it's on the person's, is the person's responsibility? I, I think at this point it's self-quarantine. Yeah, okay, that's but, good. Yeah I, don't, yeah, I don't think they send you to a military base. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know if it was that I'm serious. Hoping. But, you know, everything's changing by the minute. So uh, That is true. Know. But that's what the show is about today is how you can use these great technologies, your iPad, your iPhone, your Apple TV, uh, mm -hmm. even your Apple Watch to kind of stay in touch with friends, family, people you can't go visit anymore for the little while. And there's so many things you can do. You showed something last week. You did a little house party fun. That was so cool. House party. Have so you gotten cool. a chance to, to play with that we yet? We have. Oh, In fact, good. one of the things our 17-year-old uh, has missed is his Friday, weekly Friday get-togethers with all his buds. We usually have four or five teenagers in the house. So uh, we're going to do a house party on uh, Friday. The other thing, you can just do regular analog games. Mike, uh, 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 Michael and, um, and Lisa were playing Uno, and they FaceTimed in Grandma. And yes. even though she couldn't play Uno, she was she was kibitzing. Yes, and it was I was I was I was you know sitting in the living room while I was listening to this. They were howling. It was so cute. <laughs> it was so much fun. So you don't even have to have a game like House Party, uh, but House Party kind of enables that. What games does House Party support besides? Uh, you showed Heads Up. Yeah, Heads Up is one. They have a their own version of Pictionary. Um, and which is, is again, essentially you're, you're drawing something and you're getting the other person to guess. They can see the category. Uh, then there's one that I have actually not played yet, uh, but it involves an avocado. In fact, let me I'm gonna launch House Party <laughs> <Info> now. <laughs> you know, all the best things involve an avocado. Involve an avocado. as they, Yeah, chi it's called chips and guac. Um, so, <laughs> again, don't know how this is played. Uh, but then there's also trivia, which I don't know about you, but I think trivia can be a lot of fun. I love trivia. Um, are you, uh, besides being a cake boss, are you a trivia master? 
I wouldn't call myself a trivia master. I would call myself a trivia master. I can see that. Guessing that you are good at... Um, I know a lot guess- of factoids. <laughs> yes, exactly. See, I want to be very good at uh, trivia. And, and there are some trivia things that, yeah, I can definitely get. But there's some where, you know, I, it's it's not my cup of tea. But uh, let's see. Uh, word association game is well, chips fun. and guac. That lets that's your fun. friends know what you think is canceled, sneaky AF, or maybe even uh, heart eye emoji. So um, the card is sneaky. And then you have to match the card to that uh, category. So, for example, someone chose sliding into the DMs as a oh match my. for sneaky. And then you vote on the best one. So it's a little bit like, um, what's the apples, the apples, apples to apples? Yes. Yeah, which is apples a really fun snapples. game. You know what? Uh, that's good. We'll play that with Michael's friends. I know they love Heads Up. And uh, this is kind of like a little bit like Heads Up, but they love Apples to Apples, too. So that's good. Yeah, they don't yeah. they you know, it's so funny because they graduated, you know, when they were little apples to apples. Now that they're teenagers, <laughs> they're playing cards against humanity, which uh-huh. is basically adult apples to apples. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Apples. Very and, adult. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. It is very, or it can be. Um, there are some cards in there that will uh, turn turn your face a little red. Okay, I'll give um, you an example. I don't know if this is appropriate oh. for prime time. <laughs> but you yeah, know how games have rules about who goes first? I don't know. I can't really tell you this. I'm Okay, I'm embarrassed I even thought about it. Oh, I don't think it's that bad. It's the one that, it's whoever's had the, the last bowel movement. Glad you said it. Yes. Yeah. Whoever pooped That's- most recently starts the game. <laughs> <laughs> that it's that level of humor and it's perfect yeah. for 17 year olds they are laughing 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 ha 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 you know it's that bathroom humor so that's cards against humanity it's a little bit um uh awful but it's still fun and by the way it's a perfect game for this because there is a apple ios version in fact it's made for apple tv there's an apple tv version of cards against humanity and, I didn't know that. Yeah, so more fun even because you're sitting around the TV. I don't know if that would be uh, social distancing though. I think that, yeah, if you're all in the same you're place, in, doing you, you, it. yeah, you'd have okay, you'd have to have a big room, and you'd each you have to be in a different corner <laughs> of the room. Everybody so, is on their own. Sorry, uh, forget I mentioned that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> everyone's on their own beanbag chair. How could you? Six you could play that though because you'd have one be the card master. And he could have it on the Apple TV and then set up his uh, FaceTime or house well, yeah. party. And then if you could see it. No, you can't. No, If you everybody be- has their own deck of, of Cards Against Humanity, which, you know, it, there's a good chance that everybody has at some point purchased a Cards Against Humanity deck, then you could have a person uh, play. Oh, no, you couldn't because. Yeah, because you can't see. You would you, see who. Yeah. 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 No, not a really good way to do that. So yeah. I played chips and guac <laughs> um, on on house party. I want to, by the way, just mention. I don't know if there's an official Cards Against Humanity uh, ah. on the uh, iOS platform. It, they they look like they're all like evil apples versus humanity, or oh, I see, black humanity against name. cards, or black cards. Which of course, the black cards against humanity are uh, cards are black. So it may be that there isn't an official one so i apologize to the folks at cards because they really do a a fabulous uh, thing they do and in fact oftentimes um make great donations to different places yeah yeah yeah. uh, they do they do well in in all of that one of these you're gonna have to show because i uh as you well know i don't do the instagram oh you want to talk about the new the um, co-watching yeah so instagram has has roll or they're rolling out a feature um I have not tried it yet, but I did see the announcement this morning that uh, they're rolling out a feature that's with Instagram video that essentially lets you, and let me see, I can probably show the little video here. They call it co-watching. So you, you browse with friends. Yeah, so let's see. And then there's a, there's a COVID donation uh, stick section in the stickers. There you go. Look at that. If you feel sick, seek medical help, but call, wait, that's not, that's not the thing I'm looking for. So this is one of the things right here there. You can see this little stay home sticker yeah. and it's a story. It's a collaborative story that of exists. people staying at home. 
staying at home and doing the right thing. Um, <laughs> okay. So there's, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I think, okay, this is getting, every day that we have to do this is getting weirder and weirder and weirder. Absolutely. People are doing, you know, they're Velcroing themselves to the wall. They're duct tape taping themselves to furniture. So, yeah. <laughs> This yeah, is, you get the idea. Yeah, getting weirder and weirder and weirder. So, uh, but the the new feature that they're that they're working on adding is um, that it lets you do video chats with your with your friends, and then you can also collaboratively scroll through Instagram. So, I guess that's a way for you to rate your rate the posts that you're seeing or something like that or laugh together. It's a little bit like that new app. It's called Netflix Party. Uh, Netflix Party dot I want to say it's dot com, but I want to check. Yeah, Netflix Party dot com. It is a uh, Chrome extension uh, that works, you know, it only is on the desktop or on your laptop. But what it lets you do is you install Netflix Party the on Chrome, you open a video in Netflix and then you create a party that other people can join and it syncs the playback for everybody that's watching that Netflix video. So that way, across the internet, no matter where the people are, you can all make sure that you're watching at the same time and then you can have a chat about it. Uh, there's even a little chat bar on the side so that you can have a conversation uh, while you're watching the show. Fun. So fun. that's been kind of fun. In fact, this was pretty cool. Uh, someone wanted to do um, a worldwide kind of Netflix party and they wanted to watch... Uh, Beyonce and Netflix collaborated to release this uh, documentary called Homecoming that was about Beyonce's homecoming performance at oh, I think it was I saw Coachella. That. Yeah. And so she had put this call out, you know, we're all going to watch it at 7 p.m. or whatever. And Beyonce ended up retweeting it, you know, sort of officially, wow. unofficially endorsing it. So I bet they everybody broke Netflix. Was, they absolutely <laughs> did, I'm sure. All watching it and chatting together <laughs> on Netflix. It's simultaneously Netflix deepest dream and worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah, worst nightmare, right? exactly. Oh I think God. what I like about that, I've wanted something like that for a long time. I can remember uh, there was a time a friend of mine was in another country and there were new shows coming out on Netflix and wanted to watch them and you, there was no way to sort of, we could talk about an episode afterward, but to be able to stream it simultaneously and be at the same spot, idea. be able to text yeah. one another, I think it's really cool. I might try that with my mom because uh, she's a big Netflix fan and we're we're getting ready to watch uh the new season of Berlin Babylon which is a wild dark German uh, a sh series in the a kind of murder mystery series and she loves it I know she does and we'll watch it uh, and Lisa loves it so maybe we, the three of us could watch it together that's actually in a way something better than we've had before mom's you know across the country um the idea that we could now do stuff like that so in some ways this is you know this is an improvement over the old old way of doing I agree things. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Jackbox uh, TV is a very popular multi-person collaborative um, gaming s platform system. Uh, Jackbox, they had, they released these party packs that are available on is this, Apple TV. Is this the Pick old You Devices. Don't Know Jack game? Yes, trivia. yes. Yeah. It, well, they used to be just trivia. Now there are loads of different games. There's one game, for example, where each person designs uh, their own. They, they'll put up a prompt and you have to design a T-shirt uh, of that prompt and then people have to uh, guess whose T-shirt is whose. I mean, there are a whole bunch of different games that they've invented that, that goes back, that goes past just trivia. And what Jackbox, I think, has mastered is its ability to have um, have the internet collaborative uh, nature. Uh, well, what am I trying to say? They have built the foundation, the infrastructure to have people playing games over the internet that some of these other games have not and it's you know it's newer to them they've been Jackbox doing this forever been, right so, exactly yeah, exactly yeah. in fact they have a whole uh how a covid 19 social distancing pack they're giving away drawerful two for free for three weeks a drawful not drawer yeah. so that's the pictionary style a game i mean this is yeah this is a good thing to check out um and it comes on so many platforms. So you, you can there, play you this can... remotely. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be sitting at the same TV to do it. No. Nice. 
Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty neat stuff. Um, and it's, like I said, there's so many different games that are available. Uh, the, the writers of this are f- fantastic and very talented individuals uh, who've created these different games. And I've had loads of fun in person with folks playing these games. Yeah, I have but, too. Uh, like over the internet a, as well. A trivia murder mystery. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. I love it. Jackbox. That's, uh, uh, there's a party pack. There's a variety of pricing. And there's some yeah. free stuff now because of social distancing, like Drawful too. Do a search on your Apple TV uh, in the App Store if you have one for Jackbox, and you'll come across the nice. party packs. They've got party packs one through I think six now, and so the the older they are, you know, usually the more discounted they are. And if you've never played them before at all, then the first one it's is going to be you. just as new to you as new it is the most recent yep. one. Yep. The the whole party pack, six of them uh, on Steam is twenty bucks, twenty one bucks. So oh wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. The I, Apple TV iPad bundle is thirty bucks. Have you done any more uh, manual gaming with the help of online tools? So you did talk a little bit about Uno as an example. Yeah, that um, was really fun. You probably play chess with somebody over the. Oh internet. yeah, I play I've, for years. And if you're a chess player. Uh, that this is this is a no-brainer, and this is actually the way I've been playing chess almost entirely for a long time. Uh, I was playing Chess.com, but there is now uh, a really nice chess server that is free to everyone. Let me—I can't remember the uh, name, but I'm a member of that. But Chess.com has been around for uh, some time, and there is uh, Lie Chess L I C H E S S dot org. You can go in there right now. Now, if you've not played competitive chess before initially it might be a little confusing because they have different styles of games they have bullet they have blitz they have classic chess they have rapid chess bullet blitz and rapid are all time limited games which is nice you could play a game in five or ten minutes uh it, but you gotta play play fast but they also have grandmasters in there playing uh you can watch grandmasters play chess uh, oh wow it is a really wonderful uh thing i don't know if lie chess has a an app, but it is uh, browser-based. Chess.com does have an app. Actually, you might want to play browser-based because the Chess.com app is pretty terrible. <laughs> but this is this is lie chess, and this is why. Uh, but what's nice is you can. Um, this is why it's a little confusing when you first get there. But uh, this is this is. Uh, they have all kinds. They have things like Crazy House. Um, you can, if you're a chess fanatic, which I am. You can watch the candidates tournament, which is was going on. I don't know what's going to happen now with the with the candidates tournament. There, that's the that's the lead up to the world championship, and I guess it's only two people, and you're you are six feet apart. So I guess they probably they probably could uh, <laughs> still play the game. Chess is kind of the ultimate in social distancing, anyway. So yes. lie, lie chess l i c h e s s dot yeah. I'm watching a game master. Uh, it's cool. I mean, it's animated, a, a right? Because you watch yeah. the, you watch the games. Um, you're actually uh, you know we're actually watching here. This is uh, two very strong masters play. There's a grand chopper master. 1905 versus yeah, top. He's a grand. Shot. He's a grand master, which is whoops, which is the top. Uh, whoa, it's a little hard to get that mm-hmm. just where I want it. Which is the top uh, uh, player, and oh my goodness, time to shine! Who's a fide master has lined up four pawns in a row, but now the rook invades. It could be trouble. An attack on the queen side. This is very, very exciting. Not really. <laughs> Wait, that reminds me. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, I actually spotted it because of Lisa over on Twitter. Um, <laughs> there is a guy right now who is basically taking mundane happenings in the world. Yeah. And is uh, using his he's a he's a oh, golly, what's in that game that's like football? Yeah. But it's yes. uh, cricket. What? Cricket. <laughs> is he cricket? No. <laughs> rugby. Polo. Polo. Rugby. 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 I think it's rugby. Yeah, rugby. He's a rugby announcer, <laughs> such a but he's sport. taking oh, he's mundane everything in, stuff. Oh, that's great. Making it sound yeah. like rugby. Oh, oh now awesome. I got to find the guy because I just followed him and it was hilarious. There were about nine videos of him. There's one where he's talking about these dogs uh, that are in the park and they're just running around. And, oh, chocolate's coming up on the back. Da, 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 da. That's hysterical. Um, That's this wonderful. is Nick Heath at Nick Heath Sport. I'll share it here in our um, 
Notion document, Leo, so you can uh, see it if you want to. But yeah, there's uh, several videos in here with uh, you know people. There were some some people strolling along with their babies and things like that uh, that they were. He was doing announcements for. Should, really I, play, should I play with him? You want yeah, to? you should absolutely All play right. one. We'll do. Uh, the interminable wait is really funny. All right, let me uh, let me get it queued up here in our. I'm uh, just for people who want to know. We wanted to make it uh, possible for uh, Kevin to stay at home, and uh, and not have to come in and uh, and work. So I'm switching the board. Normally Kevin would uh, do all of this, but I'm switching the board today. And that means you're going to have to bear with me while I press a lot of buttons and talk at the same time. There are a lot of buttons he has to press. Yes. So Sorry. I am I'm looking at his feed. Which, which one should um, I... I did text you the link directly to one, but okay. um, well, let keep scrolling. Let me go back to you so I can, I can pull up your text. Real time, yeah. folks. Yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> We're so doing it live. We, maybe we haven't saved Kevin any time since he's going to have to edit the hell out of this, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That All right. Be... Some live commentary, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nick Heath. Let me turn on the audio first. Here we go. Uh, now then, the uh, interminable wait. They've been here for a good hour and a half so Set far. Uh, Mercy Richards, the 12 time champion with the trolley. How does she keep doing it year <laughs> after year? That's what a large family will do for you. Never wants to be at home, that one. Uh, of course, this is the warm up event for the international airport boarding gate heats uh, <laughs> taking place all over the world. Who are those people? We've all got a ticket. Well, none of us have a ticket anywhere as it's the end of days. <laughs> and it's just good to see the supermarket run the gauntlet challenge and not troubling him from his bedwear. That is a challenge. <laughs> Nick Heath. You can follow him on Twitter. I hope he does more of these. And it's Nick Heath Sport uh, is the uh, Twitter account. N-I-C-K-H-E-A-T-H-S-P-O-R-T. Uh, you know, it's nice to have something on Twitter that is not depressing. Right. Yes. Whenever I run across those things, those absolute gems, yeah. I have to save them. Yeah, I'm following. Uh, them I immediately right now. followed awesome. Nick Heath uh, because there are about nine of them that you can scroll through. Uh, you know, sometime it's they're they're really funny, and I, I appreciate it. I hope he continues to do them. Right now, they're in the middle of. Um, he's in the middle of different news outlets reaching out to him saying, oh, can I talk to you about this? You know, oh, thanks. You know, this is this is great what you're doing. It's Let's hear brilliant. more about it. So it's brilliant. Good for you. A lot Nick. of fun. Yeah. Uh, oh, another one that I wanted to mention, we talked about Scribble uh, on an episode not too long ago. It might have been two episodes ago. The developer of Scribble was on uh, the actual whiteboard along with us. But um, oh, this that was is so much a, fun. Wasn't that fun? Yes. This is a whiteboard app that is collaborative. So different people can join your whiteboard and you can all uh, have a conversation together. Um you know, you can write, you can draw, you can add articles to annotate across the board. And with this, it makes it really easy to do things like tic-tac-toe or uh, hangman or other games that, that involve simple uh, Yeah, sort of you don't have to let the developer and, tell you what to do. You can uh, exactly. do something fun. That's yeah, so idea. I think that that is, is an easy way uh, to use Scribble because it is free um, as long as someone has a, a subscription to it, then they can invite as many people as they want to a board. So one person in the family could get the, the Scribble subscription and then invite your different family and friends and then you could all draw things together or you you can play Pictionary here. You can play, like I, I said, it. Hangman. You can play whatever. I so it. I wanted to give an honorable mention to Scribble. Yeah, Scribble, uh, is, for sure. Scribble is very cool. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Oh, we didn't mention Space Team. That uh, one. We, we've showed it before. Yes. Uh, but how, but so Space Team, the way I've played it, you all have to be in the same uh, place together. Can you play Space Team with it, people you have to in different places? You have to have a good connection um, okay. in order for it to work. It, it, by that, I mean in order to do video, uh, to do a video chat conversation. So you can imagine you're having a, a Skype conversation with oh, your I see. So, friends and family. But, but only one of you is playing. Well, no, you would all have your own devices, and then they put in the code. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can't that, do that. It comes up, yeah. Oh, yeah, because you would do, do that lag. normally. You'd be all sitting together, but you could do it with, oh, forget lag. That makes it more fun. That's true. That's true. That's Play true. the press, press, what? press. I'm pressing, <laughs> I'm pressing. Three gargle blasters. <laughs> Go back to. I, I didn't think remember. of that. So, yeah, so uh, actually you could do that with House Party. 
You'd all mm -hmm. log into Space Team. You'd need a phone and an iPad, I guess. Yeah, you'd have to have two separate devices. So that's kind of where the laptop or something serving right. as your right. your video makes the most sense. So it, it would be a little bit of a struggle, but I think Space Team's so much fun. And you're practically already all shouting at each other whenever you're doing anyway. video calls anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. might as well make fun out of it. All right. <laughs> Hey, let's take a little time out, and then we'll get to your questions. And there is a, actually a lot of news. As we sit here, we're oh, waiting nice. for the rumored, not promised, because Apple doesn't promise, uh, iOS 13.4 to come out. And this is the one that would have mouse support and trackpad support. A lot yeah, of people have been playing with the beta. I've been checking. Usually they release it right about 10 a.m. Pacific fact, time on Tuesdays. Is it coming out? In fact, I just saw... I'm checking, that checking for, checking. unable to check for update. Try again. Oh. Yeah, it says out today. Supposedly. Out today. Rolling out and should appear on devices worldwide soon. Okay. Um, Who's yeah, saying Mark that? Mark Gurman. Apple? Oh, Gurman. Mark Gurman. So it's rumors. Uh, it's still rumors. Yeah, he says it's currently rolling out. Rolling out now. So yeah, oh. still rumors, but. Anybody see it yet in the, uh, in the chat room? I don't think anybody's seen it, but I'll tell you what, chat room, the minute you can see it, let us know. I think you should you should get right out there and uh, wait a minute. Keith says it's out. Did you did you, did you get it, Keith? Are you getting it? Are Keith? you getting it, Keith? Or you like he, Krabby he's Patties? Just don't read, you? He's just read that story. Our show yeah. today brought to you by. I got the greatest night's sleep. It's been a long time, to be honest with you, and mm -hmm. I really owe it to my Casper. We spend so much time in bed, a third of our lives. It's so important for our health and our mental wellness, as well as just you know, being rested for the day that we get a good night's sleep. And a lot of that comes down to having a great mattress. That's Casper. Uh, uh, online, I love this. They're what they call a direct-to-consumer -consu brand. They they bypass the middleman. And actually, this is one of the very first direct-to-consumer brands. The founders of Casper saw a real inequity in the market. They looked at the mattress stores and they said, those guys are doubling the price of the mattress just to give you the opportunity to lie on it for a couple of minutes before you buy. Casper decided we could sell direct, make the best mattresses, at for, sell them for a fraction of the cost by going direct to, to customers. But they realized there's a problem here because people still want to try before they buy, right? Casper came up with a brilliant plan. Everybody's copying it these days, but it's the, they were the first and they're still the best. 100 night trial you order a casper right now it comes in a surprisingly compact box you open up the box <clears throat> the mattress unfolds by the way fresh as a daisy it does not smell like a factory it doesn't smell like rubber or anything it's in fact i've bought mattresses from the mattress store they say well you gotta air it out for three days before you <laughs> no not with a casper it's fantastic and they have products cleverly designed to mimic your curves, providing supportive comfort for every kind of body. The original Casper mattress, as an example, combines multiple supportive memory foams for a, it's kind of amazing, a quality sleep service that has just the right amount of both sink, so your, your bony bits go in there, and bounce, so you get some support for your back. It's a breathable design, too, and as you know, Micah, that's really important. Sleeping cool is the best way to mm -hmm. sleep. And the Casper mattress helps you regulate your body temperature throughout the night. 20,000 reviews of the original Casper mattress with an average of 4.8 stars. You can't get much better than that. That's on Casper's site, but also Amazon and Google. <clears throat> there are three other mattresses. That's the original. They now have the Wave, which features a patent-pending premium support system to mirror the natural shape of your body. The Essential... And this is a perfect one to send kids on the way to school, you know, in the dorm room, that kind of thing. A streamlined guest room, streamlined design at a price that won't keep you up at night. The hybrid, which is the one I have, it, it combines the pressure relief of award-winning foam with durable yet gentle springs. I like this one because it has such good edge support. I don't roll out of bed. <laughs> in my old mattress, before the Casper, I would literally roll out of bed. I get to the edge and boom, I'm on the floor. That I love the hybrid because it supports me right to the edge so I can get out of bed like a normal human being. I also love the rest of the Casper product line. Pillows, sheets, the amazing Casper glow lamp. Uh, you can be sure of your purchase, too, with this 100-night risk-free sleep on a trial. Free shipping and painless returns to the U.S. and Canada. If at any time in that first 100 nights you say, yeah, it's not for me, 
They'll come, they'll take it, they'll refund you every penny. Make it very easy for you. Because <clears throat> they know, you might say, well, I want to try before I buy. But I, I have to say, I think they could also do this because nobody gives up their Casper. <laughs> Once you get a Casper, yes. it's like, yeah, no, I'm not, you're not taking this away from me. Get a Casper mattress today. You'll save $100 towards select mattresses if you go to Casper dot com slash ios today use the code ios today at checkout that's c-a-s-p-e-r casper.com slash ios today for a hundred dollars off select mattresses terms and conditions apply we thank casper it's a tough time and a lot of advertisers are saying oh we're going to cut back we don't have money or we're not sure about the market casper thank you for supporting ios today we are very grateful and you can support ios today by by getting a Casper. Go to casper.com slash iOS today. Don't forget to use the offer code iOS today at checkout so they know you saw it here. Thank you, Casper. Now it's time for the news, and we're still checking. Any iOS 13.4? Uh, no, 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 no. Yes, so there are some people some now. Some people are getting I've, it? I've gotten yeah, confirmation there. But All I right. want to show on my screen currently, you can see my little cursor moving around. I'm using the trackpad. Oh, so you uh, have the beta of 13.4 on there. I do have the beta so that you can sort of see here whoop, how it's so kind of locks what, in. this is what John Syracuse calls ghost finger. Ghost finger. Diddle, 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 ghost finger. Now, what I love, can you open some text cause what, or a button? Go over to the Bluetooth button because what it's supposed to do, according this to one? Craig Fegarigi, no, it doesn't do it. Maybe it'll do it later. Oh, wait, I can't turn on Bluetooth because then I lose my Whoops. trackpad support. Just, I, got, him. Wrong, I got, him. I got, got him. him. I got him. Wrong button. You got me. You did it. It's like hitting F11 just, back just in the day. Just click. Just click. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was mean. And what track? Uh, are you using the Apple Magic trackpad? What are you using? Yeah, I'm currently using the Magic trackpad. But it would work with any Bluetooth uh, any trackpad, Bluetooth mouse or trackpad yeah. uh, will work. The different ones are going to offer different features. So this has some gesture support. You can see I'm doing three finger swipe up. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I Craig can. did a little video in his isolation uh, showing some things. One of the things I liked is how, and maybe maybe it's not doing it, that when you hovered over a button, it would kind of highlight the button in a way that would become clear. Yeah, I'm trying to think of where I saw that. Um Oh, maybe in the home app. Let me go to the home app. Oh, and then yeah. there's also, when you're in text, if you go into notes. Oh, yeah. Let me go into notes. In text, it changes to a carrot. Uh, oh, yeah. There you go. Whoop. Yeah. Whoop. So that's, I mean, what they're, I mean, that's not unusual. Desktops do that too. But I think that there's an opportunity here. The reason I really hover over the, over the notepad buttons the reason I thought this was really clever, yeah, there it did it. There we go. See how it becomes a big, it's clear what you're doing. It's pressing a button. And I think that's very smart. So it's not an arrow. That's kind of, you know, as I called it on uh, on uh, some other show, antediluvian skeuomorphism. Um, wow. <laughs> I don't even Say know what that, that means, but it's fast. a good, it's a couple of good words. No, it's just, it's antiquated. The ma There's no arrowhead. And the arrow isn't necessary. Showing where your your mouse is with a circle, I think, is fine. And then it, but the main thing is it changes depending on the function. So having it hover over a button becomes the button in effect. I think is a very sensible way to do that. I love the three finger swipe to go to expose. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, what does two finger do? Yeah, there. So this two is two fingers the, is a scroll. So um, three fingers is multitasking. Just... Two fingers yeah. is scrolling. Yeah, so I can scroll through, let's see, as soon as the App Store loads. There we go. I can scroll down. And you're just doing that with two fingers. That's very natural. Two I mean, uh, And then three fingers to the left or right ooh. lets me move apps. It'll also work with multitasking. You can swipe through if you have a, uh, what do they call that when you have the bar over there on the right, the uh, the window on the right, the floating oh, uh, window. Oh, side by side Yeah. Um, if you apps. have a floating window, you can scroll through all the apps that you've got available to you. Uh, using the three finger swipe as well, so the, oh, the gestures nice. are clever, and I think uh, more discoverable than gestures on other platforms. I'm excited. I think this is going to be really good. You and I will both get the uh, the, new the new keyboard when it comes out in May. I'm I'm very excited. Have wait a minute. Is this the first show since the new iPads came out? We should Wait maybe mention that. Wait, no, no, no. I think it was, the, wasn't it the last one? No, no it wasn't. So, was it? hallelujah, there's new iPads, kids. <laughs> yeah, okay, wow. Why did I think that, 
I don't think we, I thought I don't I we I've ordered it. It should uh, arrive uh, that's tomorrow. That's what it was. I think that's what it was. Let me switch so, back. Uh, so what uh, what is new in the new iPads? <laughs> There's a new A12 Z Bionic chip. Thank you for the Z. Uh, <laughs> we're all Canadian at heart. Uh, no, so the the yes, there's a new chip in it. I think that uh, that's Much faster, exciting. Right? Um, eight, yeah, eight graphics processing units. Eight. That's more Which, than six. That is two more than six. In fact, twice as many as four. Wow. I, math is weird, you know? It just really blows me away. Uh, one of the big things, I think, is the new camera system. So it's got uh, a new ultra-wide camera. So you've got your normal wide camera. Now it's got the ultra-wide. I really love the ultra-wide And these are uh, 12 camera. megapixel, I think... Are they the same? Uh, 10, as? 10 ultra wide, 10 megapixel ultra wide, 12 megapixel oh, okay. wide. Are they the um, same as the ones on the iPhone 11 or no? The current one, yes. Um, and then... <clears throat> and then the, it also has a front front facing uh camera that is 10 megapixels very good but the third thing on here so that's the two lenses instead where there would be another lens on the iphone yeah a telephoto lens on the iphone instead there's a lidar scanner light detection and ranging scanner uh, and it's early usage here it's going to be uh sort of cordoned off for use as part of augmented reality um, so it, it's a very specific thing, uh, where, where they will be doing AR detection for, for height and, and depth and all sorts of different things like that. Uh, it, but it can also be used in new ways that we haven't thought of yet, you know, to take advantage of things outside of AR kit, um, which is pretty exciting. I, the, I, this seems to be something that's going to be coming eventually to the iPhone, but right now, it is just going. It's just on these new iPads um, to do lidar detection, and it makes sense because if you hold up the iPad, it makes kind of a perfect kind of way to look at the world, as opposed to the uh, iPhone. On the other hand, the iPad's a little heavier. I've ordered we we uh, to to be a little more economical than usual. We ordered only uh, one of these, <clears throat> but there's another reason. I think that it's not there's not a significant difference between this and the most recent iPad Pro, except for these few things: a little bit faster yes. processor, uh, the screen's the same, the, In fact, the I, cameras are better. I would argue that the thing that's making this new and exciting is the software changes, and those are available to the current exactly. iPad. And so right. when that is paired with the case that you and I will both be getting uh, that has trackpad support and you know it, it has the backlit keyboard, that's going to make all the difference for us. There's no new Apple Pencil or new uh, changes in, in pressure sensitivity or anything like that. So outside of the, the upgraded processor and the fun AR potential, again, that's potential. It's not going to make a huge difference, I think, for folks day to day. Uh, there's just potential there in the future. Given I that, think this is very significant. I'll tell you why. I Okay. So uh, the fact that they're adding this trackpad slash mouse support, and as you pointed out, that'll be available in iPad Pro, all existing iPad Pros as well. If you can get to 13.4, you'll have it. Uh, and this keyboard, this new uh, magic keyboard case that they're offering, that keyboard case will also work with the older iPads. To me, this makes the iPad a real computer. Um, you know, it's cantile cantilever design, so it raises the iPad up, so it actually looks like a laptop. In the mm -hmm. hinge uh, for the keyboard, there's a Type-C connector that can be used for power as well as data, I think. I know it's at least power. Uh, which is connected to the smart connector on the back of the iPad. We now know why they put that smart connector on the back, not the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's going to be very interesting. This looks like a laptop. It, with the trackpad, it functions like a laptop. Uh, it also is priced like a laptop, I should point out. <laughs> um, the three hundred fifty dollars for the for the large uh, keyboard and trackpad, and yeah, uh, that's golly gee, that's, the, that's, that adds a lot because it's a thousand dollars starting price. Now you're now you're thirteen fifty. If you get a decent amount so of storage, much. you're at fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred bucks. That's a laptop. That is how much I pay for a. That's how much I'd pay for a MacBook Pro, right? Well, and the <laughs> MacBook Air is starts at nine ninety nine. So at the same time as they announced a new MacBook Air, they announced a, a new iPad Pro that is the same price. So, but I think what Apple's really saying 
is this is the computing platform for the rest of us. The only thing missing at this point, and it's Apple's fault, is the software that makes this a full-fledged computing platform. You'll notice on the web page they talk a lot about professional software, but people who use professional software, I think, aren't completely happy. Maybe it, maybe it'll be different now because we have uh, we have a trackpad and a mouse, but I think they're not uh, video editors, um, you know. 3D rendering. I don't know. Can you, word processing? Is it going to be as good as a, a full fledged computer? And the reason I blame Apple for this is because they set the pricing early on, the expectations for yes. software on iOS so low. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to make a pro app for five dollars or ten dollars or twenty dollars. So I think. What do you think? Are we starting to see companies offer like OmniFocus more expensive apps? So I think we're starting to see more expensive apps and we're also seeing people spending more money on apps. In fact, just yesterday, I keep trying to use my trackpad on my MacBook, uh, but it is currently connected to my iPad, so I can't do that. Um, just yesterday on uh, Smart Tech Today, Matthew Casanelli and I were talking about a new report out of Sensor Tower uh, that shows that U.S. iPhone users are spending... Uh, much more on apps in 2019, currently about $100 in a year. That's up 27% from 2018. But it's still a small amount compared to what you would spend for application software on your Mac. On your Mac, yes. And so $100 is, you know, two apps on the Mac uh, versus, I'm sure that these folks are spending multiple. But what, what this does show is that there is more of a trend of spending money on apps. Good. Because I can tell you, Leo, there uh, in the past, there have been plenty of times where I've had to sit down and have that conversation with friends and family saying, you know that little face you made when I sent you this really great app and then you saw that it was 99 cents or $1.99 right. and you did not want to buy it because it cost 99 cents or $1.99? That's, that's troublesome. Let's talk about this. Um, and I always like to think that every developer... You know, I'm sure they've got family, they've got dogs, they've got everything. But I just want to think that every developer out there has free range chickens and they're trying to raise these chickens and feed these chickens <laughs> and they can't feed their dog on free range chickens if you're not buying their dog on apps. <laughs> It's the free range <gasps> chicken theory of app pricing. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> it's going to change the world someday. I, I think Apple's doing the right thing, though. Be with You add this trackpad, you add this keyboard case that really makes it look more like a laptop it's still only 12.9 inches uh that's that's a small laptop you know that's uh but it's you know a 13 inch laptop that's what i have my dell xps 13 that's what uh you know if it's close to what the macbook air is it's touch and if you had the trackpad support and if you could get some pro apps, maybe the app developers were just waiting for that, waiting for 13.4. Honestly, I, I want it to happen because I would love that iPad to be my go-to laptop. I think and that's it, what it's I, almost there. That's what I love about this. The 11-inch iPad is, to me, that perfect in-between space. Right. Um, when I got the, whenever you got the Surface Laptop 3 for me, Elvis... I, it was a bit of a revelation for me That's because a I That's a 14 didn't, incher, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 30, 14, 13 inches um, sm smaller than the 15 inch MacBook Pros that I'm used to. And that was a revelation for me in terms of what portability could offer me and how nice that was. And this 11 inch iPad Pro that I currently have uh, paired with this new keyboard when it comes out, I think is going to be. I'm going to love it because that will be then at that point my perfect laptop. go between laptop yeah. space. I already pretty much use my uh, my personal MacBook Pro in clamshell mode uh, constantly for my home office. That's what, how it is right now. It's connected to two monitors that I use as my actual monitors. It's closed, and when I'm at work, uh, the my work MacBook Pro is while it's at my desk also in clamshell mode connected to two monitors. So. That is, those devices at 15 inches aren't as portable and go everywhere as this perfect little 11 inch screen for me um, that, that works quite well and yet remains incredibly portable. I, I so take it around with me everywhere. I ordered, and I'll just show you how quickly that racks up the 12.9 inch iPad. Uh, now, honestly, I'm going to get in space gray. The $1,000 version only has 128 gig storage, not, not. 
too bad. Only 128 at a thousand? Yeah. If you that's want fantastic. 512, which I think is what I ended up ordering, that's, yeah. it's 1299. A terabyte would be 1500 bucks. And that's not including the keyboard. That's just the 12 inch, 12.9 inch iPad. If you want the cellular, which I also ordered, uh, now we're now at 1450 bucks. Jeez Add $350. Please. For the keyboard, that's eighteen hundred dollars. That is a laptop price. That's a high yes. end laptop price. Now you you prefer the eleven inch, and by the way, the the keyboard is going to be available for the eleven inch. So that's that's the good news. And uh, if you want five twelve Wi Fi plus cellular on an eleven inch iPad, that's twelve forty nine. That's yeah, that's a little closer, a little closer. Uh, I can't remember what the keyboard is. I think two hundred fifty dollars for this. So now you're going to fifteen hundred dollars. For an 11-inch iPad with a decent amount of storage, cellular, and the keyboard and trackpad, I think that's pricey. Apple's a pricey product, um, but I do think it, it. If if the pro apps come out, if we start seeing Adobe Photoshop or something like it, mm -hmm. if we start seeing Final Cut or something like it, I guess iMovie's pretty close. I, uh, uh, yeah, there are uh, third-party apps out there, and we talk about those all the time for video editing and, and well, so we should. Forth. We should be clear that Photoshop is is on on. But it's iOS. not a full. It's not the full Photoshop. It is. is it? it is. It. It's. They claim it is, but I. It feels like it go. doesn't have every. Fake it doesn't feature. have everything, and they yeah. are they are working on it. But it's certainly a step up from where we used to have to use Photoshop Express and Photoshop yeah. Lite and all that other stuff. The you know now now it's there, and it's sort of their first dip dipping their toes into the space. Um, mostly that was just saving us from getting emails because there are going to be people going, "It's on the iPad." Yeah, no, I know they have it. They've had it for some time, <laughs> but it's always felt to me not quite. But maybe it's what you maybe it's see. I think the opportunity with things like LumaFusion and um, uh, but my my actually my favorite is Pixelator Photo. Um, mm -hmm. There's an opportunity to do something that's a, maybe more suited to the UI of a touch interface in an iPad yeah. than Photoshop is. So I I think now that you have a trackpad uh, and so much power, I'm hoping developers will say, all right, but we're gonna have to charge you a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks for this app. We'll start coming up with these apps. Uh, because it would be really nice to use it as a laptop. So we bought one. Um, <clears throat> I will get the keyboard for your 11 inch and the keyboard for the 12 inch. Um, yeah. And and that you and I can brings... fight over the 12.9 inch new one. <laughs> we want to at least review it. Right, exactly. And I think that that with that once you get the keyboard, it pretty much brings the current round of iPads up to what uh what the new ones are in terms of usability say, yeah Ooh, yeah I mean, please don't be taking pictures with your ipad <clears throat> and the <laughs> ar is going to be fun at first but how many times do you want to play hot it always lava ends up getting gimmicky the, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like really the real question mark will be the performance and whether you'll need that kind of performance to use those pro apps it certainly has a lot of performance the new ipad pro but i know it may it may be overkill it was overkill last time yeah uh, some sa a sad note in our news uh, segment by uh, my friend Bill Atkinson, who makes the absolute best uh, photo card app out there, uh, has decided to uh, call it quits on photo card, the print service for photo card. That you still be able. You see, this is our Christmas card, and what we did is we printed it and we had him mail it and everything, and it was great. He does great prints. Um, I've been doing it for some time. In fact, if you look at all the postcards I've sent. Uh, there's there's quite a few. This is the Christmas card list, but I can go back to our traveling uh, around and so forth. Um, we've sent out a lot of these. Here's uh, let's see. Here's the uh, postcard I sent from uh, from the Garden of Gethsemane in Israel. Um, he's still going to offer the email service, so you'll be able to take it and email it uh, to somebody, and they'll be able to see it. But it won't be the same. The, the printouts were so beautiful and, and nice. And, and this uh, Bill Atkinson had been doing, I think, probably uh, at a loss for some time. But he sent out an email to all of his uh, users that uh, uh, it's time to print any photos you, you, you still want. One more print run. Actually, it might be all, already too late. I think he was doing one more print run last Thursday. And from th at that point on, you'd have to use email only for that so just a little note he said he you know i think he'd been doing it for a long time as a personal hobby more than a, a, a profit center so right we're glad he did right. it as long as he did 
Um, now, Siri has been updated. This is so some more news uh, to help folks who are wanting to check uh, if their current symptoms mean that they should go and get tested uh, for coronavirus. So you can say, hey, boo-boo, do I have coronavirus? And then it will ask you a few yes or no questions that can help you to figure out sort of your situation. These are pulled in from the U.S. Public Health Service uh, and the CDC. And so it will go through and ask you uh, multiple questions that can then give you more information based on what questions you are asked. So kind of nice. This is one place where this is being done. Uh, in fact, most of the virtual assistants are offering something like this. And then also the CDC website itself has a, a, a new, let me find what it's called. Um, it's a bot that they've created, a little chat bot called Clara or Clara. And uh, it will help you figure out if you have coronavirus as well using the um the the little bot so you you tap into it and then it'll you know ask you privacy policy questions and then it'll start to ask you some questions um and then just call it the coronavirus self-checker so i like that there are easier ways now um super close to there, there's a lot of friction in between you and getting answers that you need. I think, uh, well, we know uh, if you have done any user experience or user interface design, then you know, uh, or frankly, any sort of <laughs> human uh, interaction study, the more friction you add, it can be the, the tiniest bit of friction, but the more friction you add, the more distance you add between someone and the goal that they're trying to achieve, the less likely it is that they will follow through to achieve that goal. And so, uh, with this, to be able to just talk to my assistant and start to get some sort of answers, I think is great because we do, many of us do have these smartphones. If you're watching the show, you probably have iOS devices. So to say, hey, Apple's smart assistant, do I have coronavirus? I and then be great. able to go from there. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, unless you uh, speak African American English, in which case it's not going to know what the hell you're saying. You saw that study? Yes. I yes, want to talk I about this. And it's, a, it's a sensitive topic. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, I, if you read the study, uh, it was not with actually with Siri. It was with the developer kit that Apple sends out for Siri. And they tested it with uh, African-American English. And mm -hmm. it did a very poor job of understanding it. However, I think here's an opportunity for Apple because it's a it's another it's effectively another language. It's a dialect or a vernacular of uh, um, of standard American English. Yeah, A A V O African American vernacular. Or sorry, A A V E African American vernacular English. I actually read a great book about it called Black English uh, by uh, linguist uh, African American linguist uh, James McWhorter. I highly recommend it, which makes a good case, very good case for this being a full-fledged language. Sometimes people say, oh, it's illiterate or it's ignorant. It's not. And in no. fact, it has uh, tenses uh, that are not available in standard American English that are very valuable. Other languages have, but ours does not. So in many cases, it's a more sophisticated language than standard uh, English. Uh, and it, I think it's an opportunity. I hope Apple responds to this study and 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 instead of saying well you're not speaking english you're speaking <laughs> but actually adds it as a language now i know that they're going to get a little heat if they they do and they don't either way uh you remember the whole ebonics maybe you don't you're probably too young but oakland uh the oakland school district uh, said they were going to start uh teaching ebonics what they called ebonics which is this uh, a uh, what is it? A A V O V E. This, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, they got a lot of heat and laughter for that because I think a lot of people think it is not a real language. It's an ignorant form of speech. Yeah. It's a slangy form of speech. It's for, it's actually not. So I'm not surprised in a way that Siri and by the way Google didn't do a very good job. Siri did the worst. Doesn't understand it because there are words and and constructions, grammatical constructions, which are not standard at all. And uh, but I think it's an opportunity for Apple. I think Apple should add it. To be honest, I don't know how they would add it. Maybe add it silently and just understand it, and not yes. as a separate language. Uh, now I'm wondering if that that book was it a book that you said that you read? Yeah, um, an excellent book. It, 
Is that the book where they talk about uh, the many court cases uh, where the the sometimes there were situations where folks who were speaking AAVE, African-American vernacular, vernacular English, were wrongly prosecuted based on the fact that the uh, – what's the person called that does the court record – Oh, the uh, uh, clerk. Yeah, we're not the yeah, clerk, the, the, uh, the transcriptionist, whatever. Yeah, the transcriptionist person yeah. um, incorrectly transcribed them or properly transcribed them. But when it came time to understand the meaning behind what they were saying, it resulted in them being wrongfully prosecuted. And I wish that I could. I, I'm sure I could. I don't have the time right now. But to find that, it's really interesting because they gave examples of how, you know, I'm finna do this or uh, or or, you know, things like that and how that can be misunderstood. Um, my brother-in-law um, speaks a, a pretty heavy form of African-American vernacular English. And I'm not going to lie to you. When I first was getting to know him, um, I was at a different <laughs> time in, in my life as well, where I was um, a little more closed off to, I don't know, being as open-minded as I could be. And in that way, um, uh, it, was, it was interesting how my family around my my brother-in-law approached uh my introduction to him and things like that where they felt that they you know had to sort of oh you know that he he talks like this but you know da, da, da. he's not and, ignorant he yes. just sounds ignorant and right it's really and, and a shame because it is not shame. ignorant it is a it is a full-fledged language it's a dialect and yeah. it's actually this the book um is called talking back talking black it's by uh, James McWhorter, or John McWhorter, I got his name wrong, John McWhorter, he's a professor at Columbia of Linguistics, an African American himself, and it's it's it makes a very good case for uh, why it's a full-fledged language, and in some cases superior to standard English, which is interesting, um, and I loved it, I, I, I listened to it on Audible, or I would lend you a copy of it, but I, uh, I highly recommend it, it really, I guess I can lend you a copy, can I? I, could I, was, I have a couple of credits, so I think I'll just uh, it's, grab it. It's really, really good. I know you, I don't think you ever spoke uh, African-American English. Your father is Nigerian, so he didn't speak it. But no. um, you probably knew people like your, your what was it, your cousin? your No, my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law. Uh, and uh, do, it, do you understand it fluently? Do you, could you speak it if you wanted to? Uh, not speak it, but understand it, yes. I um, feel like I can understand it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I, I do, I feel that for the most part, there is a level of, of inherent... Um, uh, it's it's fear based and ignorance that results in folks feeling like they can't understand it. If they would just take a second it's to listen, perfectly understandable. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And it's beautiful. It's kind of like Shakespearean English. Uh, it's a it's a variant. Um, and I imagine that if you were from New Orleans and you spoke uh, a kind of a Creole pigeon, you'd probably have a hard time using Siri, Siri as well. Mm -hmm. um, and and I know if you're from Scotland, they can't understand you at all. <laughs> so that's not a surprise. And I think the headlines, in fact, I think 9 to 5 Max said this is silly to call it racist. It's not racist. Uh, the headlines kind of uh, made it sound like it was worse than it was. And I'll stand up and defend Apple um, because it's a different dialect. They should add it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't think it'd be so hard to add. There's some odd grammatical uh, constructions. But other than that, I don't think it'd be so hard to add. Yeah. Um, let's see what else I have the news in front of me now that we're sharing. On Audible, Notion. Well, speaking of Audible. Yes. Uh, oh, aren't Audible, they great? They're giving away yeah, books. They are. So Audible Stories, you don't even have to have an account. You can stream for free on the desktop, on laptop, phone, tablet, whatever. Uh, but Audible is giving away some stories for free. And the, the page is really sweet. Uh, let me go to the do it to it here. It says... They entertain, they teach, they keep young minds active, alert, and engaged. Stories help. Starting today, Kids Everywhere can instantly stream an incredible collection of stories, including titles across six different languages. Yay, it will help them continue dreaming, learning, and just Isn't being kids. Yeah. Stories help. It's true because uh, uh, a lot of kids are home, schools are closed. And uh, I know as a parent, I'm glad my kids aren't young, but even with our 17-year-old, it's hard. And, uh, and and it's hard for them to have to stay inside. And you don't want them to watch Phineas and Ferb 24 hours a day. So it's nice to have some other 
Yeah, because I want to do that. I don't want them to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, Winnie the Pooh's on here. Oh, a lot of Audible Originals. Nice, um, nice. Anne of Green Gables. I mean, there are some really good titles on here. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Parents would want to listen just as much as uh, kids. To yeah, I'm seeing some stuff on here that, yeah. oh, okay, that's something I want to check out. Uh, so very we cool. will have a, um iPad Pro. I wish it were coming today. It's coming tomorrow. A number of our favorite journalists, including Renee Ritchie, were seated with iPad Pros early for review. Renee will be joining us in about half an hour on Mac Break Weekly. We'll get his review. It's also up on iMore, of course. Uh, Jason Snell got one. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of reviews, a lot of positive reviews. But I don't think, honestly, if you have the most recent iPad Pro, the it's it, not worth the, the 2018 model. Uh, yeah, you should be. I don't think there's a need for an upgrade, honestly, at uh, this point. Yeah, and that seems to be the all over agreement yeah. uh, for sure is yeah. that it doesn't seem to make sense to to upgrade uh upgrade to, to the new keyboard with the trackpad i'm gonna out. buy that you and i are both going to be uh, using that i'm curious how it works on an 11 inch it's gonna be a little tiny teeny me it's just a little i mean it'll look like it'll look like this one it'll be cute but <laughs> you could type perfectly well on the uh, smart keyboard yeah, I just do little, 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 little. Tiny, <laughs> pointy fingers. That's all. Yes. All right. Questions coming up in just a second. Before we do that, though, uh, might be time to mention our fine, speaking of keyboard sponsor, Matthias. Oh, yes. In fact, I'm using a Matthias right now. I love this one. Actually, I'm glad we are in uh, my studio because, of course, I snarfed this one up because I, <laughs> I wanted to have it. Uh, this is the uh, Matthias. Let me, let me show you a close up. The uh, Matthias. Uh, 10 keyless. They call them 10 keyless because it doesn't have a um, a, um, uh, a keypad on it. But I like that for compactness. I'm not an accountant, so I don't really need a number pad. But this one is nice. This is the wired one. And what I love about it, see this, I've been talking about this, but now I can show you. It has a little knob that change, you won't be able to see it in here because I have the bright lights on. But it changes the different backlight shades cool. so you can go through the rainbow and change it change it as you're in the mood for the other thing i love about matthias keyboards they just feel great mm -hmm. um, are you using a matthias at home oh you got you know, the gold to, you got the gold I need one to sneak that one home it's, it's currently at the office i need to head in yeah. there with a mask and everything on so i can get it yeah because i've got the rose gold one at, at the office and it's gorgeous if you're working at home now you probably have gone home and now you're working with whatever you had at home Upgrade your keyboard. When Mat Matthias started, as they've been, he's Edgar Matthias, their designer, is a keyboard nut like me. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and we had so much fun talking to him. But they started because Apple stopped making some of their beautiful keyboards. For instance, if you like a tactile keyboard, they make a tactile keyboard with lots of key travel and clickety keys, very much like the old, uh, I guess it goes back to the iMac keyboard. Uh, it's just fantastic. They have, and all of their keyboards, they've been around since 1989, all of their keyboards work with the Mac without any additional drivers. They have the Mac-specific keys. Note, I, you know, I don't have to worry, <laughs> I don't have to deal with a, a Windows key or some weird kind of key on my keyboard. I've got the fan key, the command key on here. Also, one other thing, I and all the function keys work, by the way, see the expose key, and I've got the media control key, the volume key. So the, all those function keys work. These are beautiful. Beautiful keyboards, beautifully made, cast aluminum. They have wireless keyboards, and they've done something I really admire. They put giant batteries in there so that you get year-long battery life on the wireless keyboard. I love a wireless keyboard. I hate the fact that I have to put new batteries in all the time. These are rechargeable, and they last as long as a year in normal use, and that makes a big difference. They, the, the batteries in there are basically the size of, the, of a battery from a smartphone, so they're much, much larger. They have backlit wireless keyboards. Yes, backlit wireless keyboards. Beautifully designed to look great with your Mac. They have the the gold color if you want. The Ergo Pro keyboard is cool because it's a split keyboard, which is better for your wrists. Your angle on your wrists is a natural angle instead of as, you know, with the normal keyboards where you have to turn your wrists. So if you have carpal tunnel or you just want to work at home in a more comfortable way, they have that beautiful uh, memory gel uh, wrist rest uh, is built into the Ergo keyboard. They have, I mean, I can go on and on. It's a great site, M-A-T 
ias.ca slash ios today. You'll get 10% off your purchase if you go to their site through that address. Matthias.ca slash ios today. Yes, they're in Canada, which means they have very nice Canadian support people up there in Aurora. <laughs> Janet and Carmela and the gang are up there. And I found they're really good to talk to. They can help you if you have any questions. A, a, a worthy successor to Apple's keyboard. It's the keyboard they used to, kind of like they used to sell. They don't sell anymore. Everything the original had a little bit more too. You're gonna to very be very happy with the design, the functionality, the robustness, and oh yes, it has a built-in hub for connecting your favorite wireless mouse or wired mouse or a wireless mouse dongle. Actually, it's got two. So I have one on this side for I'm a lefty for my mouse, and then one on this side for any USB device I want to plug in. I use it for uh, thumb drives all the time. It's very very handy to have those two. This is this is the my absolute favorite. I immediately snarfed this one. I wasted no time uh, getting it. You're going to love your Matthias. If you're working at home, you need a good keyboard, go to matthias.ca slash iOS today. Check them out. You could check out the keyboards, find something that fits your style and your budget. Matthias.ca slash iOS today. 10% off your purchase. Get yourself a nice keyboard. Matthias.ca slash iOS today. It's M A T. I A S. Uh, so our first question, and Leo, you'll have to hop into Notion so you can play this. It's a video. Oh, how exciting! Uh, Thank a video you from David. Thank you, David. We appreciate it. We love questions on video. Uh, I'm David. I'm from Manchester in the UK. I thought um, he might be. My question <laughs> is about making videos for YouTube. Uh, not specifically YouTube, but making videos in general. Uh, I'm looking at starting a, a YouTube channel. Um, my content, I already think I know what I'm going to be doing as the content. Um, but my big question is, are there any tips for making those videos and for uh, animating those videos, adding uh, like animated graphics to them, uh, like Ooh. overlays, things like that? Oh, that's Thank cool. you very much. Bye. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you for the question. Uh, a couple of tips. Turn off the cartoons in the background. <laughs> That is a good tip. <laughs> Just a little tip. Uh, tip. Maybe you want to put get a tripod for your camera. Uh, although the handheld look, it's very popular these days. Um, no, let's give him some uh, serious tips. He wants to do animations and overlays and stuff. That's really yes. cool. So I was going to show you um, a, a Premiere Rush. Um, <clears throat> Premiere Rush is an app uh, from Adobe that is a simplified editing app for the for iOS. Premiere Rush lets you 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 can do photo shooting in it. I would just use the camera app. You're getting as close to the raw cut from the from the camera um, unless you're using a, a really pro video uh, capture app. And then you can import the video and what it does is it imports it and it starts to transcode it, process it for for uh, mobile sharing, for internet sharing, for things like that. Uh, it makes it very easy to go and edit the clip. Um, and in fact, we'll just do a little pause right here while I log into it because I do want to show how I recently made a very simple oh, um, video. Fancy. So one you know, sec here. While we're doing that, I might mention that YouTube has announced due to COVID-19 and the great bandwidth sucking sound of everybody staying home and watching a lot of YouTube video that they are now downgrading the quality of all video to 720p so those high I feel bad for Marquez Brownlee whose specialty is 4k videos everything is in fact when Marquez was on twit two weeks ago uh, we talked about his 8K workflow. He actually does shoots everything in 8K because he cares so much about quality, uh, and then uh, down samples it to 4K for YouTube. Um, and, and I kind of we were joking around. I said, "Yeah, you know, I uh, <laughs> I do everything in a high quality 720p, and that's it." Uh, and he <laughs> he mocked it. Except now everything is 720p at least womp, uh, for the duration. So, um, but Marquez is still putting in the quality. I I don't want to pretend that he's not doing a much better job than we do of everything he does <laughs> including i mean we, we're live folks and uh, we're logging in as we go that's how it is it's live video live video so this here is a little video that i recently made uh talking about the ama that uh leo and jason and i did so much recently. fun by the way so I much do another fun. one this week um, and so I recorded a little video, I had Henry in my lap talking about when it was going to be. 
Um, and I added these little titles in here. I shot this video just on my iPhone with a, I had a tripod set up, had the iPhone on it with the good cameras facing toward me. Uh, purposely That's shot another good tip. Video. You know, you're always I, I, very tempted to have the, uh, the selfie camera towards mm -hmm. you because then you can see what you're shooting. But that's the lower quality camera, isn't it? And here's a double pro tip for you. Uh, take your iPhone, you put it on your tripod, you put the good cameras towards you, plug in, you, you get your, your charge cable, your lightning cable, plug it into your phone, plug it into your Mac. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. this, this assumes that you have a Mac. So in this case, you know, you got to have that. Launch QuickTime, uh -huh. uh, QuickTime player. And then choose File, New Movie. Oh, so you can record right to the Mac. And then, well, you can record right to the Mac, but here's what I use it for is as a viewfinder. So when I choose File, New Movie, I can choose what camera I want to use. And so your you phone, see mm -hmm. your phone on the Mac. You see your phone on the Mac, the whole video. Oh, so that way OMG. you can check to make sure that so it's that's your monitor. To, that's your monitor. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> yep. That is a great I tip. I didn't know you uh, could so, do that. that, but you have to have quick time. Yeah, you have to have quick time. I'm sure that there are apps for Windows. I just don't know them. Oh, you know uh, what else? Yeah, you probably Mac. could use Photo Booth. Um, yeah, well, I don't think Photo Booth lets you see what your phone shows. Um, the if you chose the camera time, on Photo Booth to be the phone? Yeah, I don't think that you can. Let's see. I'll give it a go here because that's, a, that's an I interesting you, you idea. Can. I know you can change cameras on Photo Booth. You definitely can change cameras. Uh, but yeah, it's only FaceTime HD camera, the one that's built into my Mac, oh, and then my HD. you don't have a HD. choice of any other camera, even if it's plugged in, huh? Yeah, even if because my phone is currently plugged in right now. <clears throat> oh, that's fun that you got your showing your screen. Um, so that's but yeah, bad. certainly that's with disappointing, even with your phone plugged in. I thought maybe you'd be able to choose it. Up that'd here. be simpler than, than using QuickTime, but QuickTime definitely does it. And that is uh, the reason that that's there is so that you can do screen recording of your devices with QuickTime. But you, I just use it as a monitor. And you don't need QuickTime Pro. You could just use a QuickTime No, player. just normal QuickTime. You launch that. Uh, whenever you choose File New Movie, to the right of the record button, you'll see this little down arrow. You click on that down arrow. And yeah, so he's pulling it up here. Okay. Um, and yeah, then, the, uh, okay. And then switch. do you see the little arrow, down arrow to the right of the record button? Yeah. You click on that little down arrow and, and then you would choose. choose different, different yes. Camera. And if you have your phone plugged in, then your phone will show up as one of those camera outputs I or see. sorry, camera inputs. That's a and, great tip. Yeah. So that's a very easy way to monitor. Then that way you can record the video. Um, but once you've done that, this uh, app is very simple to go through. They make it so that you can quickly and easily edit it. You've got all your tools there on the left. You can see there's a splitting tool. Uh, you can get uh, down and dirty with the details here. You can see there are multiple tracks for audio, for video. Uh, it does come with some filtering tools as well. So I can, for example, um, change the volume so that it's that it's properly leveled. I can reduce background noise and echo if I want to. Enhanced speech, I don't recommend using that tool, but it is there if you want it. Uh, you can do filtering on the video if you'd like. You can add transitions. I mean, it's got it all built in. There are really great color grading tools in this simple app. And then also, one of my favorite tools is a, an easy way to shift between portrait, square, and rectangular views. And then you can go through and make adjustments to the footage itself and uh, move it how you how you see fit. And is that, uh, that's still free, uh, Adobe Rush? Adobe Rush, uh, last I checked, it requires a login. Uh, uh, but that you can make a free does Adobe have, account. So. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it has sign-in with Apple as well. So you can, you know, you don't even have to log in with the Adobe account. Oh, you nice. can just with Apple. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's Adobe Rush. And, and that's one option. The reason I specifically mentioned that one is because of the tool uh, that was that exists there to be able to um, make graphics very simply. Uh, so the, the title sequences and things like that. So I if think you're that's doing a great it, choice. Do you think it's better than iMovie? Yes. And the reason I say that is because iMovie does whatever it can to be as simple as it possibly can. Right. And in doing so, I find it to be more complicated yeah. uh, because you have to figure out its language. And Rush still feels like a nonlinear editing uh, app. So it, 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 it feels like one would expect. There's many other choices uh, out there. And we've Hundreds, talked about probably. a lot of... In fact, we wanted to do, and maybe we will do it next week, 
Uh, we keep putting it off because of COVID-19, a whole show on video editing. So uh, let's do that next week. Why don't we? Yeah. 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 Um, so so uh, we'll, we'll, that'll be something to watch because we'll have a lot more uh, tips on it. As far as doing the animated overlays, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure how you would do that. We'll have to do some in so there, investigation. Yeah, there. I mean, there are some built in in um, Premiere Rush. I feel like he uh, wanted to do his own illustrations. Maybe right. I'm, maybe yeah. I'm projecting. So, I don't know. No, no, that is what it sounded like, to the custom ones. And here's the thing. I could give you so many tips. Uh, well, I used to do motion graphics um, for uh, video. Oh, and I didn't know that. On, on the, yeah, don't tell anybody because then they might have me do it. Uh, no. Between um, cakes and motion graphics, you are a multi-talented person. <laughs> Uh, you know, a, a lifelong learner, Leo, uh, always absorbing new things. We're both that. Sagittarii. I we both have that. that. Yeah, but yeah. I have no skills. So oh, that's... we're not alike in that respect. That's a lie. But um, as far as that goes, I have so many tips I could give you about the Mac <laughs> because motion is fantastic uh, for doing those custom graphics. But I'll have to look into it on uh, that's uh, Apple's, on uh, and I think it's ninety nine bucks. It's amazing. Apple it really is practically giving away one of the great three D graphics uh, tools of all time. So yeah, take a look at motion. Uh, you don't have to be using Final Cut, although it integrates with the Final Cut suite. But it motion is a great so deal. Well. Yeah. Yeah, really is a great deal. So that, I think you're right. I think that's probably the easiest, most powerful solution. Um, there are lots. Of, I, there's Adobe After Effects, which it, most of the you know a pros lot of people use, use these yeah. days. Yeah, I designed. If you've ever seen Renee Ritchie's uh, Vector show, you did. That? I designed. I designed the early versions of his intro and the uh, little lower thirds and things like that for Vector. And you did that in Motion. I did that in Motion. Nice. Yeah, because it because of the way that it integrates with uh, with Final Cut Pro. That's what makes it so great. Um, and that is some that's a, a skill that I picked up while I was working at Newsy, where I also designed motion graphics that ah. uh, folks used to to make it uh, easy to, uh, to to integrate and change on the fly while keeping an overall consistent look and feel. And I know that um, Anthony, uh, our incredible designer and motion graphics person, um, also takes advantage of some of those tools as well. I think a lot of his comes from After Effects, but I have seen him dabble around in motion for 2D graphics um, and sort of particle generators and things like that. Uh, in our chat room, uh, a number of uh, uh, inputs, as usual, from our smart chatters. Reverb Mike uh, says he likes the free Avid, which is also available on iOS, oh, yeah, Avid, Avid Express. And Dr. Flay likes HitFilm Express, which is also Hit. available for the Mac. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, that HitFilm Express, it's free. You pay for the extras. So there are a few other choices. Actually, this is where I think we're start we're going to start to see professional apps on iOS more and more, and it starts with uh, video and uh, camera and and video editing. So um, I'm excited. I really think I would love for the iPad to become the the laptop of choice. I think it's a, a really interesting. It also means we might be able to keep Intel alive on the Macintosh side for a little bit longer. Anyway, there you go. And I, yeah, and I really would like them to do that. Keep it around. Uh, are you ready for an app cap? Oh, no, we have one well, more question is, yeah, from one Jerry. More question. Mm -hmm. Micah mentioned a while back he uses a Mint Mobile SIM card in his iPad. Mint doesn't mention anything about tablets on the website. Can you just put in a phone SIM card and will it work? Or do you need to do something special? So, Jerry, I will say I did notice um, before I ever uh, got Mint in the first place, you know, went to their website, was checking it out, um, and I didn't see any mention of, of tablets. Uh, however... Data is data. I, data is data. I opened up the little SIM tray on my iPad and I popped in the Mint SIM that I had because I didn't have an extra phone on which to try. At the time, I didn't have an extra phone on which to try Mint's service and it worked just fine on my iPad. So no, it didn't require any extra magic. There was no um, little tool I had to add to it or scratch the, <laughs> the SIM card in any way or make any changes. Data is data, like you said, and it connected just fine. You're not going to get text messages to that, you know, SIM it's not phone a, number. Well, I guess you could. No, no, I guess you wouldn't. I use Project yeah. Fi SIM, um, and they do mention, Google does mention that you can use Fi as a data 
only SIM. So I'm using a Project Fi SIM. Again, it's the same thing. I, I just what I had when I got the iPad and I stuck it in and it worked fine. And uh, Fi's data is uh, 10 bucks a gigabyte, um, but it's on my my overall plan. So uh, it's the same, uh, you know, it's the same pool of data that is used on my uh, on my Fi cell phone, the Pixel Four. So that's another one. I, I would guess that anybody that could cur that could support um, uh, uh, data over cellular would probably work in an iPad. Um, you see, I've used 10 gigabytes of data so far. This iPad gets... That's why I ordered my new iPad with the, the Wi-Fi slash cellular because I use the cellular when I'm out and about. It's nice to have, you know? Yeah. See, I, I find myself, despite having the opportunity to, I don't do a... I don't use a whole lot of cellular data on my right. iPad. We should um, mention Mint Mobile there. is a sponsor. That's our FTC hashtag sponsor. Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, Forgot to all do right. that. All right. Uh, now we can do the caps. You know, I didn't go get a cap. Uh oh. Let me. Let's oh, all. You got, yeah. Let's oh, all go. You... Yeah. Uh oh. Right. What am I gonna do? Oh my. Right. Oh my. Oh, no. I only have two hundred hats hanging here on the wall. Do you want to go get your cap while I get mine? I yeah. I've got mine. I'll take off my headphones though, so I can put it on. So okay. we'll both do that. Yeah. You know. I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. What are you? What are you? <laughs> Is that a tube sock? What kind of? What, what, what kind so of hat mine, is that? Yeah, I'm, I've got to, let me adjust it now. I've got it around my neck. It serves firstly as a sort of um, sweat catcher around your neck, but yeah. you can adjust it in a bunch of different ways. So I got to take off the headphones again to get how I want it. I am wearing, of course, uh, Uncle Sam's top hat, uh, all glow covered in sequins. Usually I save this for the 4th of July, but I think this is a good time to uh, be a little patriotic. Oh, look at you. It's a snood. Are you going to, you can wear that. I can say anything I want because he can't hear me right now. Are you going to wear that as a nightcap? Are you going to, oh, it's a, I'm, what is that? A snood? I'm prison Mike. <laughs> the prison worst Mike. part about prison was the Dementors. <laughs> prison Mike. <laughs> uh, no, so this is one of those Survivor dealies. I don't know if you ever watched the show Survivor, but they give out these, they're like long circular tube things and you can wear them in like 15 different configurations. So people that have long hair, you can kind of tuck it in, tuck it in and, and uh, have the hair stick out. You can bunch it up so that it's just Did a little headband. Did you get this when you were a contestant on Survivor? Back when I was at, well, See, I can't talk about it. That's NDA, you know, until the show oh, publishes. Oh, okay. Yeah. We it's don't currently know. on hiatus because of um, COVID. Actually, but, uh, that'd be the perfect place to be if you're. That's true. Out if on you want to quarantine out on an island yeah. with a bunch of other people. Uh, um, no, I got this on Amazon uh, because it also serves as a. You can put it over your mouth, your your neck and your mouth. Yeah. So back before we knew a whole lot about COVID and it was just like, oh, there have been some cases in Seattle. You bought a head I had condom. To, <laughs> exactly. I had to fly to Washington. And so I wanted to do some level of protection for myself. You wore so that I on got the plane? And wore the, yeah, yeah. But then, so there was a blue one and a black one. And <laughs> as a person of, of uh, color, I decided to wear the I less think it's threatening less threatening. Blue one. Yes. Yeah. Because you do look like a hijacker if you put that over your face and, and exactly. Yeah. 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 But I think nowadays it's funny because nowadays I wonder what they do. I mean, they, you, you see this in, in front of banks all the time. Uh, take off your hat and hoodie before you come in. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what they do if you go in the bank with a mask on. Now I don't know. Maybe they have to let you. You know, I was just thinking too. Apropos of not exactly this topic, I'm going to start running out of hats soon. I've got to come on over and borrow a few. I've I'll got bring hats my Lysol. To spare. Yeah, no, I think the Lysol hats are pretty sanitary. Um, yeah, you're well, more see, than welcome. But you keep your office locked, though. So yeah, how do I? Well, you'll have to arrange ahead of time with the warden. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Uh, but if you, uh, with the warden, yeah. I, you know, I actually I bought one of those uh, full body. Uh, cover all things not not for this no don't don't make that face at me this was for uh a long long time ago when i lived in a, a house and I, I was renting a house a whole full house and i needed to get up into the attic during the summer and i didn't want to get bited by um brown recluse that is the plural of brown recluse um <laughs> recluses <laughs> reclusi Oh, yeah. I don't want to get bit by one of those either. So you can wear this suit and you, but spiders won't bite you? 
well, then they can't get in and, and bite you. So that's why I had it. I had to get up into the attic to run some wire. And so I had was wearing this huge I white coverall thing. we should do app coveralls from now on. <laughs> we could have a Maybe whole I'll collection of different coveralls. Yeah. Oh, I have my, uh, my SpongeBob onesie back here. I could put that oh, on. Oh, yes. So I, we wear I, these hats. <laughs> no one knows why, really. No one to, ever knows. To celebrate our apps of the week, our app caps and let's start with micah Sargent's app of the week yeah so right now i'm a little i'm a little perturbed with myself um i because i was a responsible human being and well, so be i'm perturbed. mad that's good well i'm mad for being responsible uh -huh. <laughs> uh, because uh about a week ago this was before Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons came out on the Ninten Nintendo Switch. Yes. I went online and I looked at local places and a Target nearby uh, where we live was had a few Nintendo Switches in stock. And I was going to buy, uh, I'm not a big gamer, but I love with all of my heart and my soul and my every fiber of my being, I love Animal Crossing. Really? And always have loved Animal so Crossing. So many people love Animal Crossing. I don't get it. It's, I love it. And uh, so I had that bad boy in my cart, the Nintendo Switch, in my cart. It was available. I was going to buy it and then go and it was going to be dropped into my trunk for me, you know, because it was still in the time of, hey, we're not, you know, shouldn't be coming in and doing all that stuff. But I said, you know what, Micah? Uh, the times, they are a changing and that money that you're spending on a Nintendo Switch might be money that you need to eat food in three weeks from oh, now. You were wise. When everything goes you belly were up. Wise. Yes. And so I didn't get one. Aww. And then... Animal Crossing New Horizons came out oh, and people no. started tweeting about oh, it. Oh no, you're left and out. So now they're all, well, not only, it's not that I'm just, it's not FOMO that's the issue. Oh. It is that now they're sold out everywhere because everybody who didn't get one ended up getting one after everybody's been talking about it. How and so now you can only get them for like $700 and $1,000. So I could have been one of those horrible scalpers at the very least who <laughs> sold my Nintendo Switch. If you ran out of food, you'd have at least a market for the thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm a little frustrated in all ways. So if you out there like me are frustrated that you uh, were the responsible human who didn't drop $300 that you shouldn't spend uh, and you're wanting to still play Animal Crossing. It'd be nice I if they made this on the iPad. It would be nice. Uh, but what they do make is and have had out for a long time and I re-downloaded it in my desire to have fun again uh, was Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Uh, Pocket Camp was an app. I played that. See, maybe, yeah, maybe that. I don't like Animal Crossing because I played that. And I thought it that was so boring. It. It, is, it is not. The actual Animal Crossing oh, is not okay. like this one. This one is a very specific, dumbed down, um, more check in on how things are going. Yeah, version. yeah. So, but yeah. it's making me feel less bad about the fact that I don't have Animal Crossing because I was being smart about things. See, I got to play this thing because everybody's going crazy about it. Oh, do you have a Switch? I do. Uh, I bought one and then the, my son took it. Oh, so it could be coming back in it two might, weeks. It, so. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I bought, I bought, I not only buy a Switch, but I bought an attractive leather bag. Uh, and all this stuff. <laughs> and Michael said, what is this bag? This is awful. And so he went out and got a Mario bag and he's basically taken the switch over. I, I'll never see it again. But that's okay. That's okay. All that's right. what happens. I, same things always happen to me. My kids have always taken my fun toys. I have to. That's why I have to put Linux on everything. <laughs> it's the only keep, way to keep them away something. from it. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, so what is the game now? What are we going to do? This is a little collection. It, what is that called? It's it's a little bit of an RPG. Um, you it's like are, uh, it's like The Sims. Yes, yes. It's a bit of a simulation game, but mostly it's a resource collection game. Yeah. So you are going I mean, around. I liked it, but but I just folks. didn't. It wasn't as I couldn't. I thought this was Animal Crossing, and right. I thought, why it are is. people so excited about this? It's fun, but it's not like I'm going to play this for the rest of my life. Game. Exactly. It's nothing like the real uh, Animal Crossing, but. Okay. Like I said, when you're sitting there sad that you don't have Animal Crossing and you just wish that you could uh, do some sort of, of gaming, 
then this is, is kind of filling in a little bit of the gap. So they'll give you little challenges. You know, you need to collect different things. Um, and then you get to build out your little camp and you get to make your camp look uh, really nice and, and add furniture to your camp and uh, complete goals and play little mini games and Aww. things like that. So that is what Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is. I just wanted to remind people it is out there. Um, and it is nothing like the full-on Animal Crossing. But but fun. Uh, it's fun. And, and, and it's, can you get your Animal Jones? I mean, does it tie into your other Animal Crossing? It, or you wouldn't know, I guess, because you don't I don't it. know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wish I could make this thing make a sad face because oh, then I would do that. Wah, wah. Uh, Kevin will do that. Oh, look, Kevin did that. Nice. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Putting a sad, putting a face, sad on my face. Uh, I'm going to put on a happy face. Actually, I was going to make my app cap be Google Podcasts, which is supposed to come out any minute now Wait. for iOS, but hasn't. Oh, okay. I was really confused there for a second. I was so going to. But it hasn't. But I have one that's actually pretty timely right now. Uh, maybe you've heard about this. You might have seen it uh, advertised on uh, the news shows, or the TV shows. There's a company called Kinsa Health that makes thermometers, but they're special thermometers. This is uh, they make a uh, one that you put in your mouth or other orifices under your armpit, that kind of thing. This is the one where you just put it in your ear, and it takes your temperature. It's an instant read thermometer. But what's cool about it is it ties into the Kinsa app which is by a Bluetooth, and it has some really useful stuff. So let me just quickly take my temperature. You could take your temperature without the, uh, without the um, Kinsa app. You just, you, you just, it's like a regular instant read thermometer. You just put it, put it in your ear, turn it on, then put it in your ear, and then it gives you the button. Really? And you'll be happy to know that I am healthy at 98.4, but the reading nice. also showed up. Uh, as you can see, on my uh, my um, my phone, and it's going to track that, so it keeps track of it. It'll also, if you have an issue, it'll tell you, you know, what you should do. This is the timeline of my readings. So you, oh, you look it. at you, yeah. keeping great temps. Yeah, and I do it for the whole family, right? So everybody's got their temperature. Now, does it come with a little plastic cappies so that you're not? It doesn't come with uh, disposable cappies, but this you can wipe. In fact, I should have. I wasn't a good boy. I, but it's only been in my ear in the last uh, day. So, But every day I go around to the household and I read everybody's temperature. Nice. And in between sticking it in their ear and somebody else's ear, let me get the, get the wipe. I just, you know, you just use a wipe and yep. I'll clean it off. And this is, you know, it's, it's sealed plastic, so you could do that. And it does come with a cap for storage. It's an app cap. Look, it's a little... Oh. Yeah. Uh, it comes with an app cap for storage, but but it, you don't have to get... And actually, my my Bausch uh, Instant Read Thermometer did have those replaceable caps, and that would be great for a hospital or a clinic. But I think if you're just using it in the family, it's okay to just uh, wipe it clean. What's nice is the app gives you lots of information, including... And we just got this, by the way. I ordered it at Kensa Health. Uh, it took about a week to get, so they're out there. But if it, you can, you can. It'll tell you if there's a fever. It sounds like Michael's doing well. However, if you're concerned about something we haven't listed, call his doctor for advice. If you do get a fever, they will give you some advice. You can learn more about coronavirus, what the symptoms are. So this is a very timely app. And one of the things that they've been doing all along. If you go to kinsahealth.com, they have a map because they have million. Apparently, they've put out millions of these, and it's kind of neat because they put out so many that they now have a flu map uh, for the whole country, where you could see uh, clusters of flu and uh, other illnesses. And now, in the age of Corona, it's the same thing because there is, you know, a, they call so, it the health weather app. Yeah, isn't that cool? So you knew yeah. about this. You when I mentioned this, you'd you'd heard about this. I knew about it from you actually. You had you've mentioned it on a few shows and or maybe even in passing just in conversations that we've had and so I started checking it out. Um $70 the things, for the instant read, the one I have. The more traditional uh, thermometer that you could put in your mouth or under your arm is 35.99. Um, and I think this is nice to have in the family if you're quarantining right now, the ability to to uh 
to you know kind of monitor your uh, temperature, I think, is a very useful indicator. And then th this map that they're making is, I think, just just fascinating because you can see uh, where there's atypical illness that right now in Florida there's quite a bit of it, uh, and when there's observed illness, which is kind of it's so this is really I think. Uh, Northern California can, is doing pretty well. Yeah, um, I mean, and maybe they haven't sold a lot into California. I don't know. You can see your, uh, you can go directly to your location, and as you can see, observed illness is low in Sonoma County. Atypical illness is uh, no, the difference zero percent above expected. In other words, it's the same as you would expect. Um, it, you could see the observed illness is going up, though the, the the redder color shows it's going up. So you could see where there are hot spots. Uh, which I think is is uh, very uh, very interesting. So, this is um, and yeah. Oh, now we now with the observed illness, you're seeing, of course, New York is uh, some severe in Florida. You can see where the hot spots are. This is a I think a really clever idea. It's not the only one. And you know that uh, we had a sponsor for a long time, and I mentioned that I'm wearing my Aura O U R A ring. Now, Aura has just announced a health study they're doing with UCSF for some of the same collection of data. So if you have an Aura ring, as I do, you uh, can sign up for the Aura uh, data collection and they'll, you'll have a daily survey, the UCSF TemPredict, they're calling it, survey. Because the Aura ring, among other things, it does heart rate, it's a sleep monitor, but it also measures your temperature. Actually, let me, let me go back to the Aura app and show you. Um, I could see my body temperature, which is it doesn't show you the absolute it shows you relative so that you could see if the trend is up or the trend is down and gotcha. if you are starting to get sick i mean i'm within 0.2 uh 0.2 degrees so that's nothing but if you are getting sick you will have and i've seen this before i've seen the trend go up and it really is an early indicator of illness so i think it's cool that they're doing this uh, study with uc uh, sf um let me go back to that here um, and in which you can answer a couple of questions. Have you experienced any of the following symptoms? And uh, I have not. So I'm going to say, nope, I have not experienced any symptoms recently. And I think this is nice. This is like Apple's doing with the, the Apple Watch, but this is specifically uh, designed to um, uh, be for uh, COVID-19. And I should say what my temperature was. What was it? Was it 98? It was good, I think right? It was 90, yeah. yeah 98, it, was, it was healthful. So uh, I'm going to put that in there. And has anyone around you shown symptoms of illness? No, no, no. And so this is, a, I think, another way that UCSF is trying to uh, track the virus with the Aura ring. So if you already have an Aura ring, um, I, 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 I said, I'm going to keep wearing this because I really want to keep the temperature thing. It also shows you how poorly you slept and all that stuff, which I don't really want to <laughs> that know. That part's not fun. Keeps track, uh, of your, uh, keeps track of your exercise and all of that. But I really think the temperature thing is the is kind of the most interesting. It's also doing heart rate variability. The more variable, oh, good. the better. Yes, and, uh, means you're... you're autonomic nervous system is working properly. Uh, and two, I wanted to note that the Kinsa app does have an Apple Health integration. So you can have those temperature oh, yes. measurements automatically added to the health app for oh, iOS, that's, which that's is nice. great. Yeah, I only got this uh, yesterday, so I don't know if I did that yet or uh, not. Yeah, it doesn't automatically prompt you. If you tap the gear in the top right corner, I believe is where it is, and then scroll down all the way, you'll see Sync with Health Junior's, App. Your, there it is, Sync with Health App. So I'm going to turn all categories on body temperature. So that's nice. That Health App now becomes a complete uh, set of information. It's going to sync with uh, my uh, readings. That's really cool. And you can have multiple thermometers. You can have man multiple family members too, which is really nice. Um, and then it will track all of their temperatures as as you go, so you can see my um, my daily tracking. I think this is uh, pretty cool. It's not cheap, seventy dollars for the uh, thermometer. One nice thing they give a therm for every thermometer you buy, they give a thermometer to um, uh, school programs because they're trying oh, to get these fantastic. schools everywhere. So I think that that's uh, really good. I got I ordered it. I would say I ordered it about uh, ten days ago, almost two weeks ago, and I got it uh, pretty quickly. Just got it yesterday, so. Um, All right. Well done. Getting yeah, I think this is really 70 and uh, 36. 70, 36 for the 
under arm right. slash under wherever a thermometer and then 70 for the ear. Right. I love it that cool. they're instant read too. That That's so much nicer because, you know, with your under the tongue, you have to sit there. Talk to that bit for a bit. Do, do, I don't do, 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 I don't yeah. about you. So that is iOS today for today. Thank you, Micah Sargent. Today we have ios You are very welcome, Leo Laporte. You'll find Micah's work here, of course, every Tuesday, but he's also every Thursday on Tech News Weekly. He does Smart Tech Today every Monday. Uh, a great hands show. Hands on iOS as well, with, published on Mondays. With Matthew or sorry, published on Thursdays. <laughs> hands on iOS is really great. Well done. He's just launched that. And you have, what, three shows, four shows under your belt now? Yes, I believe yeah. it is currently yeah. four. So every that comes out Thursdays. We don't record those uh, in public because uh, um, we want to do it. It's part of you know part of isolation. We want to kind of have to try to do a bunch of them at once to min minimize the exposure uh, of our team because those we do have to do in studio. So um, we don't do those live, but we do. Uh, oh, yes. I do want to do a quick shout out uh, or, or uh, call out to the most recent hands on tech that was published. Uh, Anthony had a fantastic idea, a producer and, and editor of doing a work from home episode uh, sort of toolkit. And so I walk you through some of the things that you should consider uh, as part of your work from home toolkit. Nice. But more, most importantly, I try to maintain awareness that we can't all just go out and order a bunch of stuff. And so it's more thinking about categories and and uh, processes and thoughts that you should keep in mind while you're working from home and less about specific products necessarily. Because, yeah, we can't all drop uh, $500 no, on a new chair not. or something like yeah. that. So. Although I have to say, Lisa, uh, uh, and I think most of the staff went to her office and raided it. And we've told the staff, yes, bring whatever you need home, including chairs, if you want to bring your office chair home. She has quite a nice setup now on our dining room table because <laughs> Michael's in her office because he's homeschooling now. So there's this cascade effect. We're all working at home and we all have to be quiet when the other person is on a, a conference call. But <laughs> it, it is possible. In fact, I think uh, for some people, work at home will be so much fun that they may not want to go back to work. Yeah, uh, I suspect that may be a, a trend. We're going to see a lot more work from home. Especially Mike, I appreciate save money. Appreciate you staying home with your keeping your do rag uh, at home. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but we are able to do the shows thanks to uh, the technology and Skype, and we appreciate it. Thanks to Kevin King, our editor, who also is at home. Uh, he would normally run the show, but we decided to do the show uh, in my office, and I'm running the board. As you could tell, it's a little. R a little rougher with my uh, finger punch uh, buttons uh, punching. But uh, thank you, Kevin King. He will be editing this mess. Uh, <laughs> Bless <laughs> hey, this mess. <laughs> hey, you forgot You forgot to do your uh, your your iOS cam. You got to do that some more often. I It's so cool. Yeah, it is kind of fun. You forgot to do that. All right. All right. I did it at one point during uh, Animal Crossing. Oh, good. So there was okay. a little bit of that. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, I wish I had bought what that Nintendo... Um, uh, switch switch before uh, they were at 700 bucks really wow yeah yeah wow. my little brother's trying to find one too and he keeps asking all of us all across the country because he's got one? people in the midwest got he's got me on on the west coast and he's on the east coast oh, so we're all over trying to find sorry, one. sorry bro <laughs> oh, sorry man. bro i you won't be able to get it out of michael's hands he plays it all the time thank you everybody for being here and uh, stay safe stay healthy we're going to keep making the shows for you because yeah. uh, we just want to keep you company while you're uh while you're safe at home. Thanks for joining us. We do uh, iOS today every uh, Tuesday morning around 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern time. Uh, that's 1600 UTC. If you want to shop, uh, stop by and watch it, you can watch or listen live at twit.tv slash live. You can also ask, I always forget to mention this, your Echo or your uh, Amazon Echo or your uh, Google device. I think Siri maybe too. You can say listen to Twit Live and uh, the live stream will play, and so you'll be able to listen to us make the show. You can, uh, of course, get on-demand versions of the show from the website, twit.tv slash iOS. Uh, we want to encourage everybody to subscribe. Listenership is down a little bit across the, across the line. I think people are listening to news a lot, and maybe because you don't commute as much, uh, you're not downloading the show. Please subscribe and download it and listen. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be in the car whenever you get a moment or two or watch uh, we really appreciate that, and uh, we hope we'll see you next time on iOS Today. Thanks, everybody.